Hello and good evening, Chicago. Welcome on in to another episode of Shy Town Weekly. We have got a lot to get through tonight. The Bulls saw their four-game winning streak snapped out in Cleveland earlier tonight. We will do some post-game wrap-up from the loss of the shorthanded Bulls. It's Packer Week for the Bears. The still head coach, Matt Nagy, informed us today that Justin Fields will be back and out starting for the team on Sunday night. And for some reason, it's still on national television. So we will talk about that. Plus, I want to talk about who might be taking the head coaching job for the Bears if it were come available, what the Bears should be looking for, have some thoughts and opinions there on that. And then finally, a long, long overdue member of the Chicago White Sox finally found his way into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Mini Minosa. We'll be talking about him and reminiscing about him and the Go Go Sox a little bit tonight. So strap it on in. Let's have some fun. This is Shy Town Weekly. And welcome back into Chi Town Weekly. I am Adam Karnick, your host. So glad that you are here. Thank you, too, for being flexible to everybody listening live on this Wednesday night. Uh, Title Town Sports, Brandon was having some technical issues during his show, and he had a guest lined up that they were trying to get everything sorted there. So I agreed to back up a little bit and have our show start a little bit later so that he could get in full time with his guest. So hence the little bit of a late start tonight, but that's all right. We're the last show of the night too tonight, so we can go a little bit later if we need to, or we just have a short show. It's okay. It's all good tonight. Without any further ado, let's talk about our sponsors here at IE Sports Radio. Starting first up with, of course, the Southern California Warriors semi-pro football team. The world of semi-pro sports is unlike any other sports organizations. Players pay to play in hopes of so many different outcomes, whether it's playing to get filmed, to try out for professional teams, big-time colleges, or just playing to stay in shape. No matter what, all semi-pro players have one thing in common, and that's playing for the love of the game. The SoCal Warriors are about in a quest to earn titles and give players second chances since 2017. Whether you're in Southern California or anywhere in the world, give semi-pro sports a chance if you love your sport. You may get that second chance you've been waiting for as an athlete. Find them on Twitter at SoCal Warriors, Instagram at Southern California underscore Warriors, or go out Facebook and search Southern California Warriors. And Background Check International. Businesses, are you looking to background check a new hire on? Let Kit Fremen take care of that for you. Kit founded and has managed Background Check International since 1994, and he's here to help you with the screening process. Contact Kit and let him help make the hiring process that much easier. This business is used for professional background checks and not for the use of any crimes, such as identity theft or any other illegal activity. Go to their website, bcint.com, or find them on Facebook, Background Check International BCI. And then IE Sports Radio, we are available on all the major social platforms at IE Sports Radio, whether that's Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. And be sure to check out our website, IESportsRadio.com. For the last seven and a half years, 
we have been bringing you amazing content, ranging from interviewing legendary athletes to building tailor-made shows dedicated to all major sports cities around the country. All the while, IE Sports Radio, we've been con- we've continued to be by the fans, for the fans. And with your help, we are ready to take the next step. When you go to our website, I just gave that to you, iesportsradio.com, you'll see our Patreon link with five different tiers. The first one starting at just five bucks a month. This donation gets you shout outs on all 27 of our shows at Bay Area Raised and at M Los Great. Thank you to those guys for being sponsors of, our, of IE Sports Radio on Patreon. And higher tiers include IE Sports Radio merchandise. We've got t-shirts, hoodies, hats, all kinds of great things there. Access to our podcasting university. Larry has started that back up again. I know they have had one session and they're planning another one, I believe, this weekend. And even a chance to be featured on a segment of our flagship show, The Defining Moment. Thank you all very much for continuing to make IE Sports Radio your direct feed for all that is sports. And also when you go to our website, you will see that the most recent class for the Hall of Fame is up for voting. There may be a name in there you recognize. Somehow I have made it into the round of 23. Thank you to everyone that has voted for me. If you feel so inclined, vote for me. But Check out the other hosts and their work on there as well. There's also great other IE personalities on there to check out and learn about as well. All right. We are seven and a half minutes into what is probably going to be a short show tonight. Let's get down to the business at hand. First off, the Bulls. The Bulls. They're 100% vaccinated across the team. That's what we were told at the start of the season. They have been bitten by the COVID bug, though. Four players out currently, plus they've had other players out due to the COVID bug. It was so bad that head coach Billy Donovan actually went and got a test just for his own peace of mind going into the game tonight. And Tess came back negative. He's good to go. He coached the team. But when you're down, Kobe White, uh, Matt Jones was a, a, a scratch tonight. And then DeMar DeRozan went down recently. Alex Caruso is down. When you're missing all those depth pieces, Eventually, it catches up to you. Tonight, it caught up to the Bulls. They lost to Cleveland 115 to 92. I'm sure that Andrew over it and uh, Cleveland is excited about that. He hosts he hosts our Cleveland show on Friday afternoons. Be sure to check him out. He will have more talk about this game. I'm sure. Good for Cleveland. It was a good win for the Bulls. You knew eventually being so short-staffed was going to catch up to them. Zach Levine did finish with 23 points. Vucevic had himself another double-double, 18 points and 12 rebounds. Overall, though, it was a rough night for the Bulls. Uh, Shot just 33% in the third quarter little under 42% for the game. The Cavs shot 55% as a team, including 46% from three. The third quarter was where things kind of fell apart. The Bulls were down at the half, and then a 22-5 run by the Cavs kind of put it away for good. This Bulls team, though, is still 17 and a 9. Still fun to watch, having just a remarkable start to the season overall. 
their next game is Saturday against Miami. Hopefully, uh, we'll have some of those some of those guys back heading into this heading into that game with Miami, so it can be a little more competitive. The Heat might still be without some of their top players. Um, I'm blanking on Jimmy's last name. The former Bull. Just keep talking and, uh, and look it up. This is this is where having a second person around really helps, so that I can, you know, r- one of us can ramble and the other person can look the things up. Uh, thank you, Taryn Butler, Jimmy Butler. Thank you. I don't know why my brain couldn't come up with that when I needed it, but thank you, Taryn, for for <laughs> bailing me out there in the chat. Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler may not yet be back for the Heat on Monday night. That'd be a big help for the Bulls. We'll see if DeMar DeRozan or any of the other COVID Bulls are back in time for that game on Saturday. But still, the Bulls are are still having success. Ayo Dosunmu got his second start tonight. Not as not as good tonight uh, in the stat sheet. Just five points, three assists, no rebounds. He had his first start came against the Nuggets on Monday night, and that was when we found out about DeMar going to be out for a little bit. Dosunmu keeps impressing the heck out of me for as young as he is and he's a second round pick in the NBA and I've heard enough from Illinois fans and NBA fans who know everything way better than I do that Io should never have fallen to the second round. He should have gone somewhere in the first round, in late teens, 20s, somewhere in there. So for him to have fallen to 34 and been available to the Bulls in the second round in and of itself was a crime. But the fact is, he was taken in the second round. And second round guys in the NBA it would not have been unusual to say, oh, the Bulls' second round pick, well, he will spend the majority, if not entirety, of his first season in the Developmental League, in the G League, and and be there playing for the Windy City Bulls. Not only is Dasunmu not playing for the Windy City Bulls, he was playing legitimate minutes to start the season while Kobe White was out. Kobe White comes back and Coach Donovan... Yes, Darren. Yeah, Jimmy Butler is who I was thinking of. He was formerly a bull, and yeah, I just my brain stopped working. So thank you. That was that was exactly the player I was thinking of. So Kobe White comes back from from his injury, and it cuts into Io's minutes. And it wouldn't have shocked anybody had it just okay. Io. You did a terrific job keeping the seat warm while Kobe was getting healthy. But if you're going to take a back seat and learn, we'll try to find some time to work you into the rotation, find some minutes for you, but your job is done for now. But instead, his play, I want to be very careful how I say this, his play forced Donovan to keep him in the rotation. 
And then when Kobe goes down with COVID, Io fits right back in. And now when DeRozan goes down with COVID, Io goes into the starting lineup. And against the Nuggets on Monday, not only did he get his first career start, he had an outstanding night. 11 points, 6 boards, 8 assists, and the moment wasn't too big for him. You know, he goes out there and he gets announced, from Chicago, Ayo Dosunmu. You could just feel, watching that, the moment wasn't too big for him. That's remarkable for a second round rookie in the NBA. I don't know enough about basketball to predict or project what Io's future is is but I'll say this he's off to an outstanding start and he is soaking up every bit of coaching that Billy Donovan is throwing at him it's awesome to see it's fantastic to see a kid from the Chicago Public Leagues stays in the state to go to Illinois then gets drafted by the Bulls and shines as a rookie it's hard if not impossible to love that story so Keep at it, Io. Keep at it, Bulls. The Bulls are going to be what is going to keep Chicago going during these long winter months upcoming. Because the Bears aren't going to be playing for that much longer. We are going to see somebody important come back on Sunday night. We will talk about that next on the other side of a break. This is Chi Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Hey, sports fans. Do you like wine? Well, we've got the show for you. This is Let's Wine About Sports, a show where we talk about wine and sports simultaneously. From the classic Cabernet Sauvignon all the way down to the grapes that you've never even heard of before. Oh, yeah, we cover it all. And we'll talk about a little bit of sports as well. Football, hockey, collegiate, women's sports, it doesn't matter. We're going to talk about it all and we're going to whine about it all. So join me Monday at 8 p.m. on IU Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports.
everybody. This is Taryn Rodriguez. Are you a fan of volleyball? Are you a fan of Thunder Spikes? Then I have the show for you. Set Point, where I cover NCAA men's and women's volleyball, high school boys and girls volleyball, beach volleyball, and even professional volleyball. Catch the action every week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. to a great game on USRN, but then the Wi-Fi crashed in the final seconds? Or do you simply want to listen to the best calls we hear at USRN have to offer? Well, then you need to go check out our Audio Boom page. It holds a collection of our best calls that you don't want to miss. How do I get there, you ask? You can download the Audio Boom app and look up Ultimate Sports Radio, or simply go to audiobook.com slash ultimate sports radio. And as always, thanks for listening and making USRN one of the most talked about sports networks on Mixler.com. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Davidson. It's your boy, Dentarius Lava. And we're the hosts of Fast Break here on IE Sports Radio, where we discuss everything in the world of basketball from prep to the pros. You guys should definitely check us out, man. Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We got all the basketball information you guys need. So we look forward to you guys listening in. And please do, because we are the best basketball show on this side of the Mississippi. And please do check us out on Twitter at FastBreakISR. D-Lock, where's our time again? 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. And give you guys plenty of time on a Sunday. Tune in. going on everybody my name is harrison glazer and we're coming at you from the show that never sleeps podcast i cover the jets the islanders the nets and the yankees this is tia moss and i cover the mets knicks rangers and the giants our show is live every wednesday through spreaker and a bunch of other ways to get our content Again, we're the show that never sleeps podcast. We talk about all those New York sports. It's a lot of fun. We get into all of it. Please tune in again. That's Wednesdays at 6 p.m. And we look forward to having you guys right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. And welcome back into Shy Town Weekly, everybody. Right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Good evening, Davidson. Your timing was perfect to come in there. Davidson Crooks is one of the hosts of Fast Break here on IE Sports Radio, where he talks hoops every week with his co host, Antarius Locke, on Sunday nights. Davidson coming in during the commercial break there was perfect because you missed me forgetting Jimmy Butler's name through the first segment. Though, I was talking Bulls, so I think I did okay on that, but you missed my mistake, so your timing was perfect there, Davidson. Do not go back and listen to it. Just just stay right where you are. 
So I talked about how IO has been accepting of coaching and how important coaching can be. That transitions perfectly into the Bears for this week. It's Packer week. Hey, hey, big rival. Oh, wait. The Bears still suck and the Packers don't. And for some god-awful reason, NBC decided to keep the game. Wonderful. That's okay. The Bears are only 12 and a half point underdogs. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure everything will be fine Sunday night. I just, I'm having... All right. Thinking one thing, think one thing, say another. I'm having flashbacks to the Tressman, the final year of Tressman, where you knew the Tressman era was over because they had Bears Packers on Sunday night. And it was over by halftime. And they came back into the third quarter. I, I will never forget. I won't remember exactly the stat that Al Michaels gave. But I will never forget Chris Collinsworth's reaction to it. Al gave the statistic. And, you know, passed, passed the conversation over to Collinsworth, to which Chris replied, if you heard that, that means you're still watching this game. And for that, we thank you because it was so over by that point. I fear that we might have another one of those going into this game Sunday. Good news, though, is Justin Fields is going to be back. Matt Nagy, who is the temporary head coach of the Chicago Bears, confirmed with reporters earlier today that jo uh, Jones Fields has been cleared medically. He's, he's good to go. He will start. That's, this is unique because this will be the first time that Fields will be preparing for an opponent the second time. Remember that I believe it was his fourth start of the year was the home game against Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, the I own you game. And Fields, he looked like a rookie in that game. But now it's going to be interesting to see. He's already prepped for this team once. What will he have learned from the first time that he can add into the wrinkles this time? And obviously he is more polished as a quarterback now than he was that first time around too. The Baltimore game before he got hurt was a disaster of a game for him up to the point where he got hurt. But before that, he'd had unquestionably his best game against Pittsburgh. And he'd had a game against San Francisco where he was arguably the best player on the field. We were starting to see him stack performances before the injury. Now he's back from injury, and he's preparing for an opponent he's already prepped for once. I am anxious and curious to see what fields will look like going up against the Packers the second time. Don't get me wrong. I do not expect the Bears to win this Sunday. And the reason why, ultimately, it's 
stems from the current head coach, Matt Nagy, the temporary head coach. I see Brandon's in the chat. Ooh, did someone say coaching? And he's giving me a good, because I was letting Brandon know before the show, I'm going to be talking about their coaching situation there in New England and doing a little bit of a compare and contrast here. But let's set this up. Nagy's done. I'm. We keep seeing reports. Is this going to be the last game for Nagy? Is this the game where Nagy gets fired? Is this the game where Nagy gets fired? We had the talk going into Thanksgiving where it sounded like they were going to fire him, that the Lions game was going to be it, and then they got scooped, and so the organization decided, aha, we'll show them and not fire the guy that we are going to fire, because that's such a great move to not fire a guy just because everybody thinks you will. But that's got me thinking about... <laughs> I, Taryn, I just saw your last comment. He's turned naggy into an acronym, not actually gaining yards. There was a statistic I saw from Bill Zimmerman on Twitter this week. He covers the Bears, I believe, for SiriusXM. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Windy City Gr Gridiron is where he covers the Bears. He put a statistic out there on Twitter. If the Bears hold to form as an offense, as a collective, Bears quarterbacks this year will only throw for a hundred more yards than Sid Luckman did back in the 1940s. For perspective, this year, the Bears are playing 17 games. In the 1940s, they played 12 games. So this Bears passing offense is less efficient than a passing attack from 80 years ago. The forward pass was barely legal 80 years ago. And Brandon's... Oh, I like this. Brandon's actually kind of coming to our defense a little bit here. He's uh, Brandon likes Nagy. There are things about Nagy that are good. There's a reason he got the job back in 2018. There's a reason that he won Coach of the Year in 2018. He designs plays very well. The problem he's gotten into is he is incredibly rigid. He does not adapt to the situation at hand. He does not adjust at all. And he frankly doesn't have much interest in the defensive side of the ball. He's perfectly willing to just make the defensive coordinator a de facto secondary head coach so that Nagy will just concern himself exclusively with the offensive side of the ball. And I want to compare that for a moment to Bill Belichick. Now, Bill Belichick, obviously, whatever your opinions of the Patriots are, whatever your opinions of Bill Belichick are at the moment, and I'm sure Brandon will, will like this. 
Belichick is the best head coach, certainly of this generation, and it's very easy to argue that the NFL's ever seen. Look at that dynasty. Look at how many championships, how many AFC championship game appearances, how many division titles. They created a monster, and he kept it going. We can, we can pick on him about his press conferences where it's <laughs> football, 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 football. <laughs> We're on to Cincinnati. We can, we can pick on him for those things. We can pick on him for the fact that, as my wife puts it, he dresses like a hobo, you know, with a with a hoodie with cut off sleeves and ripped and torn, and it's, dear Lord, please someone go buy the man a shirt. We can we can pick on him for all those things. We can we can get on him about how he pushes the envelope from a rules perspective all the time to the point of cheating and then having to walk it back. We could have all those conversations. The fact is though, let's let's really dive into that dynasty for a minute. One of the first things in the early early days of that New England dynasty, one of the things that jumped out was that they were so difficult to beat because every week the Patriots were a different team. They would completely change their approach based on the opponent in front of them. And specifically, what they would do is attack that team's weaknesses. If you struggled at stopping the inside run, then guess what? You are going to get a heavy dose of runs up the middle. If you struggled to cover slants over the middle... You are going to get a lot of short, quick throws to the middle of the field. If you had a hard time... what Whatever your weakness was, then that's what the Patriots chose to do to attack you that week. Statistics be damned. Scheme be damned. He didn't, he didn't worry about, well, it's got to be this way. It's got to be that way. Brandon puts it perfectly in the chat. Bill knows how to evolve with the times. And if you think he only does that offensively, let me give you an, an, a, an example here from a defensive side. It's a story I heard a couple weeks ago that, because Bill, of course, he's a defensive-minded coach. So it's, oh, oh, it's one thing he could do that offensive. He's a defensive-minded coach. Well, about 10 years ago, Belichick noticed that there were a lot of great defensive players available in free agency that weren't being scooped up by other teams. Why weren't they being scooped up? Because they were players specifically geared towards 3-4 base defenses, meaning three defensive linemen and four linebackers. And most teams at the time were playing 4-3, four, four, de- four down linemen and three linebackers. So what did Belichick do? He said, I know how a 3-4 defense is supposed to work. 
we can play a 3-4 this year, and he scooped up those players relatively inexpensively, too, and they had a 3-4 defense that year, and it was a top defense in the NFL. He's willing to adapt on the fly. Contrast that with Nagy, who... It's got to be a certain way. It's got to be... The ball's got to come out here at this time to that guy. Why? Because that's what looks right. I don't want you looking at that wide receiver streaking down the field wide open. That's not where your eyes are supposed to go. Never mind that he's wide open. You're not supposed to go there. Everything is so rigid with Nagy. I expect Nagy to get fired. And I want to put this out there mainly for myself, but also for other Bears fans to hear we'll come back and and mark this mark this this is episode 67 come back to episode 67 here in about a month when Nagy's been fired and we get into the debate of should they go for an offensive minded head coach or should they go for a defensive minded head coach what should they be looking for I want the guy who is adaptable. I want the guy who's going to coach the game in front of him, not the game he wishes he had. Look at the game Monday night. They go into Buffalo. You have 60 mile an hour winds. Sean McDermott insists well we're a passing attack offense we're going to keep throwing the ball Belichick says nobody can throw the ball in this we're going to run until the Bills prove that they can stop it and the Bills never stopped it the Patriots threw three passes Monday night. John Fox would have been so proud, you know, that that game Mitch's rookie year where they got the lead and then it was, oh God, the last thing I want to do is throw a pass and have Mitch throw it away. So they ran for the entire rest of the game. Belichick recognized that the Bills couldn't stop the run. So rather than say, well, I've got to throw the ball because you can't just run the ball on every play. You've got to mix it up. He said, fine, this is working. I'm going to keep doing it until they stop it. That's what I want from the next Bears head coach. I don't care from which side of the ball he comes. Because let's face it, your good coaches, you have to have an understanding of both sides of the ball. It's the only way... that you can get to be really good at your side is to understand what the other guys are doing to try and stop you. So I want that guy that's adaptable, that's going to look for where do I have the edge? Because let's face it, no defense is perfect. And no offense is perfect. There are holes anywhere you go. The best you can do is try to hide or mask the deficiencies of your scheme. But if you understand where the other guy is weak and how to attack it, let your brilliant play designer scheme up the play to attack it. But if you can recognize the way to attack this defense is deep down the middle. They're running a cover two and they don't have Brian Erlacher in his prime playing linebacker. So deep down the middle is the way to go. Or if you can recognize that 
the left side of this offensive line is suspect. If we can, we need to attack the left side of their offensive line. Identify those things. Be that kind of a coach that can recognize and pick that up. Then leave it to your assistants to come up with a way of how. But I want that guy that's adaptable, that's flexible, that adjusts to the game in front of him. Of course, I say that, and then a month from now, we're going to get all wrapped up in this guy from this place with this scheme and this history. And I'll probably go right there with it. But I want us to think about this, to try to remember this conversation a month from now, that... At the end of the day, you need the, the thing that makes Belichick Belichick is not his press conferences, is not his bending of the rules, I'm trying to be nice here for Brandon's sake. It's not his personality. It's his adaptability on the sideline in season, in game, in the off season, the adjustments. That's what makes him the best coach in the NFL. That's what we need in Chicago. All right, I'm going to take one more real fast break and then... We have a player to celebrate on the south side of town. Major League Baseball may not be recognizing its current players, but it is recognizing some former players, and we have one to talk about. This is Chi-Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Soccer Scoreboard Show with your host, Gabriel Montoya. This is the show for soccer, football, football fans, or whatever you call the beautiful game. Every week, I tackle the latest and greatest news from around the soccer world. From the English Premier League, to the World Cup, to MLS, Liga, and Mekis, and more. You can listen to the Soccer Scoreboard Show and our lineup of fantastic guests every Friday at noon here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Rushing waters of the Columbia River, stretching across the Great Cascades, and on IE Sports Radio lives the Northwest Territory Sports Show, hosted by me, Brad Buckingham. On this show, I cover all the great collegiate and professional sports teams that we have here in the Pacific Northwest. Of course, I'm talking about the Seattle Seahawks, Seattle Mariners, Sounders, and even the Seattle Kraken. But I can't forget all of that is good in Oregon either. I got the Trailblazers the Oregon Ducks, the Beavers, even the Timbers, and much, much more. You can listen to this show every Sunday from 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern, noon to 1 p.m. Pacific, on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Hey, USRN fans, 
Do you have a product or company you're trying to promote? Look no further. USRN is teaming up with small local businesses trying to establish themselves via online promotion. Let us know if you're interested. Email us at usrnradio at gmail.com to learn more. Football fans, this is me, your boy Larry, inviting you to join myself, Callum Reynolds, Mike Pat, and John Felipe for one of the most electrifying football shows you have ever heard. Three and out, right here at IE Sports Radio. Recap of the week before, a preview of what's to come, and of course, three hardcore head to head prom time face offs. Each week, you don't want to miss it. If you're someone who wakes up each morning with list of sporting events to go along with your to-do list for the day, then you just might be a diehard. The world of sports is as vast as the ocean is deep, including the major leagues, the minor leagues, the college, and everything in between. This is me, your boy Larry B of IE Sports Radio, welcoming you to join me every Monday evening at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on The Defining Moment, a show that focuses on what really matters in the sports world sports themselves, and nothing outside of them. Once again, tune in for the defining moment with me, boy Larry B, every Monday evening at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on IE Sports Radio, right here on Spreaker.com. We'll see you there. And welcome back into chi Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. One last segment here before we get out of here tonight. I was catching up on the chat room there during the break. Brandon, I would not want to be the one in the room firing somebody. I'll let everybody in on a little secret here. This is only the internet. Nobody ever finds out anything that goes on the internet, so I know it's a safe place to say this. I am not a fan of conflict, believe it or not. For a guy that rants and screams and wants to throw things during sports games and swears profusely, under my breath during sports games and unleashes and events on Twitter. I actually really don't like conflict as a general rule. So being in there and telling Matt Nagy you're fired would not be fun, would not be fun at at all. Uh, So I, I don't envy the guys in the room that will be making that call. Incidentally, it sounds like Ryan Pace, the general manager, is safe. In fact, he might actually get promoted out of all this. I'm not sure how exactly that works, considering he's been there seven years and has had one winning season and has given away so many first-round draft picks. I don't begrudge him giving up the picks to go get Justin Fields. I even don't begrudge him for going up to get Trubisky. What I begrudge him is every single draft going up and trading your first round pick to go up and get a guy. Eventually that catches up to you. Uh, You just look at the Bears roster now and the lack of depth they have on that roster. That is in part because Ryan Pace falls in love with a guy in the first and second round and just has to have him. So there's all kinds of things to talk about there. But we are running out of time for tonight. So 
I did want to say a belated congratulations. Minnie Minoso finally made it to the Hall of Fame. It's posthumous, the, the famous White Sox outfielder from the Go-Go Sox era in the 1950s. He passed away, I believe it was six years ago, that he passed away, but he finally made it into the Hall of Fame. Minoso was a Cuban player. He was actually the first non-white player on the Chicago White Sox. Very belated introduction into the Hall of Fame, but good for Minnie Minoso. Congratulations to his family. I was going to do more on that tonight, but the time got away from us a little bit. That'll be okay. We'll have time. We will give some more proper recognition to him next week. Also, uh, the Cubs have a Hall of Famer as well, so we will do more on that next week. But I did not want to get out of here without congratulation, without congratulating Minnie Minoso on that. So congratulations to him and the family. Very, very, very well-deserved. It is time for us to get out of here for this week. I do want to, before I cue up the music, I do want to be sure to remind everybody, please, if you are at all able, go to our website, iesportsradio.com, check out our Patreon link, please, if you are able Support us there. It is greatly appreciated. I know it's the holidays. Everybody's trying to make everything stretch as far as they can. But anything you're able to do, we would very much appreciate it. Helps to keep the lights on here. We've got a lot of big plans as a station. This would help us to do that. So if you are at all able. Again, shout out and thank you to at Bay Area Raised and at Marcus Los Great on Twitter for supporting us on Patreon. If you want to do that and get shouted out on our shows, you can do that there. If you've got something special that you want us to say when we shout you out, let us know. We're happy to do that. We're happy to support things. Uh, Some quick notes here before we go. Oh, Taryn. Uh, Yes, Alan Robinson did practice today in a limited capacity, so he could very well be back this week for the Bears. We'll see what that goes. He has been very sorely missed by the Bears here these last couple of weeks. And Akeem Hicks also practiced today. He was limited. David Robbins, um, David Montgomery, on the other hand, was out today at practice. This is according to Sean Hammond. I checked up with him and his Twitter feed before the show. That's going to do it for us tonight. Again, thank you to all of our sponsors, the Southern California Warriors Semi-Pro Team, and to Background Check International for continuing to support us here at IE Sports Radio each and every week. Again, if you are at all able, support us on Patreon, and also be sure while you're at our website, be sure to check out our Hall of Fame voting and cast your ballot. This is Chicago. Vote early, vote often. Thank you to Brandon and to Taryn and for Davidson for coming and hanging out with us in the chat tonight and for being a little flexible with our time. We'll get it. it, it it's all it's all good. It's all good. Thank you to Larry for all the hard work he does at the station, keeping the lights on, keeping everything running smoothly and keeping us all on track. Thank you you for continuing to come here each and every week and listening whether it's live or whether it's as a podcast down the road i really do appreciate it hopefully next week we will be talking about something good from the bears game i'd be beyond ecstatic if they win not really expecting it though the Bulls will keep doing Bulls things. We will talk more about Mini Minoso next week. We might even check in on the Blackhawks. And I want to talk about some college hoops as we're getting ready to get into conference play here coming up soon. All that next week. I am Adam Karnick 
Thank you so very much. Bear down and good night.